This conference will now be recorded. Okay, um, good morning everyone. Welcome to uh, the Recreation District 1000 Board of Trustees meeting for Friday, April 9th. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Tom Gilbert, our board president, to start with the agenda. Okay, good morning and uh, welcome to our April meeting. Um, call the meeting to order and uh, let's see, is Christina doing the roll call? She's not, a, she's not on. Usually right? we have uh, Jolene will do the roll call as the board secretary. So, Jolene? Sure. Trustee Avdis. Trustee Avdis, I'm sorry, Nick? I don't see Nick on yet, so. Wait, are we taking sorry. roll? Oh, there you yes, are, Nick. Are. Nick. Sorry, Nick here. <laughs> okay, Trustee Baines. Here. Baines present, Barandis. Uh, here. Barandis present, Gilbert. Here. Gilbert present, Jones. Jones here. Jones is present. Okay, Kevin. That's it. All right. uh, you forgot me. Um, so everyone's here. Kevin. I apologize, Elena. Good morning. Oh. S. Lee Reader is present. Present. Hi, Elena. Good morning again. <laughs> okay. Um, so item one three, is there a motion to approve the agenda? There are no changes on staff's part. So moved. Motion by Abdus. Is there a second? Second. Second by Jones. Jolene, will you take the roll? I will. Trustee Abdus. Aye. Abdus, aye. Baines. Aye. Baines, aye. Barandis. Aye. Barandis, aye. Gilbert. Aye. Gilbert, aye. Jones. Aye. Jones, aye. Lee Reader. Aye. Lee Reader, aye. Okay, on to the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, Tom, do you want to lead us in the pledge? <laughs> okay. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. Thank you. All right, thank you, Tom. Um, item 1-5 here, conflict of interest. If there's any item on the agenda today that any of the trustees may have a potential conflict, uh, please identify that now and you can recuse yourself from that conversation. Okay, hearing none, uh, we'll move on. We do have a presentation this morning. Um, we're joined by Dane Wall from CSDA. Um, Dane provided us this morning the CSDA, which is California Special Districts Association, um, the action brief for April. I'll send that out to all the trustees after the meeting. It's about 11 pages. I'll pull up the cover page, but um, at this time, Dane, I'll turn it over to you. Um, and let me pull up your action summary. Great. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate it and apologize for the late uh Submission on that, we had a little mix up at uh, internally to get that out this month. Can you hear me? Good. Okay. So, uh, yeah, good morning, everyone. I see one again, Dane Wadley, CSDA uh, field coordinator, obviously liaison to special districts in Sacramento County. Just wanted to come on, give kind of a brief update and, and on some of the things that we're working on, uh, obviously, on your behalf. Uh, that a lot of these summarized in the take action brief that uh, you'll, you'll be receiving, but um, as you might imagine the big thing right now for us is uh, is COVID relief funding. We are trying to uh, secure some money from the state, uh, specifically for special districts. So you may recall we had a a uh, advocacy effort in the in the, in Congress and the, with the administration of the U.S. Senate recently to try to get some of the American Rescue Act funds dedicated to special districts. weren't successful in that. We were able to get language in that in that in the federal bills that would allow uh, the state and and cities or counties, for that matter, uh, to transfer some of the funds that they receive to special districts. So the state from this new bill 
uh, is going to be receiving approximately uh, 26 billion dollars. And so, you know, as I said, we're essentially now making an advocacy push in the district. You guys have already already joined onto our coalition. Really appreciate uh, you doing that uh, to help our efforts. So, uh, really, what we're trying to do now, just to give you an update, is we're uh, scheduling meetings uh, with various legislators on the budget committees. Uh, to you know, to make this ask, and we have some kind of you know some special district champions, as we call them across the state, who are uh, you know taking taking the lead on this for us. So uh, we've got a significant coalition, uh, of obviously special districts, but uh, some farm bureaus and some cities and counties actually as well who are on board with uh, our efforts and individuals and community groups. So uh, we're going uh, going the full court press on this, as we like to say, uh, to try to make this happen for. Uh, for special districts, and we'll certainly keep you guys uh, updated as to how that process goes. I uh, also want to touch on uh, uh, briefly to um, this is more of a, a federal item, but uh, the the we released uh, last last month through our National Special Districts Coalition an overview of the Congressional Community Project Funds, as they're called, and I think we traditionally refer to them as kind of earmarks that came up in the past. And essentially the House has this process again where districts who have shovel ready, you know, projects um, kind of befitting the, the a earmark requests can contact their obviously their House representative, uh, their federal representatives uh, to, to get their project basically included. So there's this process that's been outlined. Uh, I can forward our our document along uh, obviously the staff for distribution to you guys and you know for consideration with all the work that you guys do um, probably a uh, appropriate opportunity and and the timeline is it's 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 pretty much now or next week uh to uh to make those contacts and and uh and you know get involved in, in that process so because each it's a real competitive process each member of congress is able to request uh 10 projects for the entire fiscal year so um it's, yeah relatively limited, but at least there's, you know, there is an opportunity. So, uh, and then I also wanted to just to turn to, obviously I know you, on your agenda later, you've got uh, Assembly Bill 361, uh, it's under CSDA call to action right now. So I want to go into a little bit more detail on that. Um, this is a bill that would essentially, I'll, I'll start from the beginning here and I'm going to give you kind of an update because we had some changes literally this week. So uh, the bill in its original form, Technical does would allow uh, local agencies to basically continue to conduct remote meetings in the event of a state or local emergency. So, um, you know, obviously, with we're assuming that when COVID ends or you know is kind of getting getting better, we can go back to in-person meetings. Uh, but we at CSDA, talking with our members and, and et cetera, believe that there's still you know a reasonable um, Opportunity, I guess, if you will, to have a to have a remote meeting for districts in the event of you have a state or a local emergency, like we obviously have had for the past year. So we were going to put some of the governor's executive order language essentially into state law through Assembly Bill 361. So that's what the bill essentially does. Uh, as I said, we had a few uh, updates this week. So we had some uh, opposition come through, uh, trying to clarify some points. So we've Put in a couple of amendments that have gone across and like i said literally earlier this week a couple of days back and it would essentially say you know it's trying to preserve the uh, certainly transparency and enhance the transparency for it so for instance uh if you if you have a local emergency and you're meeting remotely the board would have to kind of continue to revisit that's its decision to do so every 30 days okay so you know you can't just do it in perpetuity and no one ever looks at it again so there's that. Uh, the bill would also prohibit local agencies, like you can't require members of the public to submit their comments in advance. Like there has to be like a real time opportunity to make comments, right? We can you know, all understand why we're going for that for transparency purposes. Um, and then also too, the, the amendments that we just have include language that requires local agencies to refrain from taking action on items when there's some disruption that prevents, you know, a broadcast of the meeting, right? So if we have some Zoom outage uh, or go to meeting outage, right, and it prevents uh, the information, the, the broadcasting of the meeting, the board would have to 
refrain from taking action on that uh, as well. So um, all of this in the, like I said, in the effort just to clarify some of these points, obviously clarify the importance of transparency through our bill and, uh, and you know, mitigate uh, this opposition that came through, which we believe uh, it, it will. So um, that will be the, the ask that you guys have uh, later today or later in the board meeting. Um, let's see what else there, there's other issues we're following some workers compensation a lot of workers compensation legislation that we're following right now uh, that could have a uh, an impact on, on you guys as a as an employer and then I, the last thing I want to touch on briefly uh, was the uh, a Supreme Court uh, decision that came out on pre prevailing wage which uh, could apply to you guys as a reclamation district it's the um, uh, let me get this wrong there. Kanana versus uh, Barrett Business Services decision, which the Supreme Court held that some contract workers who were doing uh, acting as belt sorters for like a county sanitation district were engaged in work that falls under the definition of public works uh, for prevailing wage purposes. So then, therefore, the you know they, they um, you'd have to pay prevailing wage. The employer would. So again, there's. It appears that this is going to, this could include routine activities for work done by you know, our irrigation, utility, and reclamation districts, which obviously includes you guys. So uh, one of the points to, to highlight for, for you guys is there's a couple of the justices basically said, hey, you know, the legislature needs to kind of look at this <laughs> uh, to provide some clarity here. So um, that will, you know, likely, will li likely see something uh, emerge from the legislature to provide some guidance on this uh, for all, all special districts. So um, that's you know where we where we stand right now uh, on the decision. I can again be you can read the decision. There's a link in the uh, in our take action brief that uh, um, that uh, you can. Oh, there you go, right there. Perfect. So yeah, thanks, I'll go, go ahead and stop there. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll send this out, uh, trustees. I'll send you this email with the action um, summary, or the take action summary, and then you'll be able to click these links if you want to read further into that. So um, I'll send this to you as soon as our, our board meeting is over today. Dan, is there anything else you want to highlight? No, that, that, that's it. Yeah, I think I've been more than generous with your time. I sure appreciate it. Uh, happy to answer any questions. Yeah, do any of the trustees, thank you, Dane, for that. Do any of the trustees have questions for Dane about the information he provided? We will be talking about 361 later in our agenda, um, obviously with some changes, but. Uh, I do. Uh, just out of curiosity, you mentioned that there was opposition that came out. Which group was it? Was it California Forward or Common Cause? Uh, that's, that's a good question. Um, yeah, but I believe it was one of the, like, like the First Amendment Coalition, ACLU. Okay. Yeah. All right, Dan, well, thank you so much. And um, you're welcome to stay, but I'm sure you have other things you'd like to, to work on this morning, but um, you're welcome to stay. We're not kicking you out, but uh, you're gotcha. free to go. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks so much, everyone. Uh, Dan? Right. Yes. Just wanted to say thank you for collaborating with us last year on AB 1958. You know, um, thank you for your efforts and representation in the legislature. That was very helpful. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Happy, happy to help. No, it's an important issue for the uh, for the district. So, yeah, th thank you, Dane. Uh, we're on to public comment here, item three on our agenda. If there's any uh, comments from the public on agenda items, on uh, non-agenda items. Uh, you may make public comments now. Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to uh, informational items. So the first uh, informational item is the general manager's report. Um, I do want to um, just talk a little bit more about you know, what we uh, started the meeting with about the recordings of the meeting. Um, did have a urbanization committee meeting and uh, the urbanization committee uh, unanimously supported and recommended that we uh, post um, our videos online for our, our trustee meetings. And so 
Um, doesn't require board action, but I wanted to make uh, all the trustees aware that we'd be start, starting to post uh, with today's meeting on our district's website. And so um, if there's no major objection from any of the trustees not on the urbanization committee, staff will just move forward with that action as a transparency action. And so I uh, just wanted to make you know everyone aware that, that that's what staff's intending to do. And um, we have room on, Christina's done a good job on our media side on our um, website, um, we should be ready to go. Sometimes these meetings, depending on length, can take a while to download from GoToMeeting and then upload to our website. So hopefully we'll have this up this afternoon. If not, um, by Monday afternoon, our, our recording will be posted. Other than that, I didn't have anything else to point out from the general manager's report. Um, we're continuing with uh, our budget you know, prep. We had our uh, a personnel subcommittee meeting. Um, so was that Wednesday? Wednesday we had that meeting um, and to look at the budget assumptions for personnel. Um, that went well and I'll be um, providing those meeting minutes. Um, should have had them in uh, for today but I forgot to type them up. So um, the, the action from the personnel committee was to um, you know, support the, the assumptions that were in the spreadsheet. I think all the trustees received that, the personnel spreadsheet um, ahead of the personnel committee meeting. So those budget assumptions are in there and that was a recommendation from the personnel committee. So you'll see the, those min minutes in um, next month's agenda uh, as just a catch up to, to make sure. Other than that, um, any questions on the general manager's report? Hey, Kevin, this is Nick. I got a question on the status of the hydraulic model. So um, what what is, I mean, I saw what's in the report, but what's what's kind of the next level of detail there? Where Where is the consultant at in terms of uh, percentage of completion generally? Uh, and what's the status with the funding agreement? Looks like we were supposed to hear something back here in April. Certainly there's obviously a few more weeks left, um, but what's going on on that end? Yeah, so I didn't hear back from the city was going to take it up with uh, the city council on their April. I think their meeting was April 6th. So I haven't heard back from Rosa if that was approved by the city or not. Um, I can follow up with her today um, to make sure that that went through. Um, the consultant, we've purchased the model. Uh, it's in our hands. We've sent over, um, you know, the, our consultant CSI or Tom Plummer has sent over information to meet and hunt to start looking through and doing the calibration um, percent complete um, of the total project you know probably less than 40 percent but you know the first step you know we have the the draft model or the updated model that was produced by the grand park folks and so you know there to their extent you know it's a 95 to 100 percent complete model but we still have a lot of work to do to do all the verification on the model runs and make sure that you know we're we're doing all the testing through that and so Mead and Hunt's going to be involved in that process along with CSI and in the city and county as soon as the funding agreement's in place I'll turn over the model to them so that they can start using um, you know to to do their verification so waiting for that funding agreement to be signed but we're still working in the background and and doing our updates for RD1000 so just so I'm clear, so I understand what you're saying. So Tom Plummer's group has done the work that they uh, were contracted to do. Now Mead and Hunt is, like you said, fine tuning the model, and and that's not going to commence until you have executed agreement. Well, an executed agreement from both uh, the city and the county for funding Mead and Hunt's work. Yeah, well, Mead and Hunt's work is funded through us and just the verification. We've purchased the model, but we in the city and county still need to do, you know, all the calibration runs. That's where uh, Tom Plummer's not complete yet. I mean, he's barely getting going. The fact that we purchased the Grand Park model got us off to a really good head start. Um, but there's still, I think it's, you know, on the project schedule, we're looking like August or September. Um, to be complete with RD1000's portions and then all the calibration for you know, the letter of map revision will occur over the next you know two years. There's a lot of field verification that needs to happen with the city and county on surveys um, that they need to go back out and do some field shots to calibrate the model. Uh, but we have it in our hands to make sure that we're accounting for 
you know, all the culverts and, you know, things in our district to make sure that's all in there. So that's what me and Hunt's working on on behalf of RD1000. All right. Uh, maybe next month, Kevin, I'd like to at least manage my expectations, maybe just a brief project schedule so I understand some of the major milestones. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Any other questions on a GM report? Okay, hearing none, we'll go on to uh, superintendent, oops, sorry, operations manager's report. Uh, let me get the link here. Oh, and just real quick on the GM report, um, we have with the FMAP agreement, I just reminded because I saw the little sidebar here. Um, we have ordered uh, two of the pieces of equipment and submitted our advance payment request of like $781,000 or something like that. So we should be getting a check from the state in advance of our work. We're going to commence with um, doing our scope of service and requests for um, uh, proposals for the vegetation work, but we're ordering the equipment. So we'll be well ahead of uh, the December time crunch that's placed in the grant. And we're still waiting on the um, the next round of FMAP to be released as far as the funding agreements or solicitation of you know proposals uh, from the state. So anyway, just, just quick on that. So operations managers report, any questions for Gabe on the uh, on item 4.2? All right, hearing none, we'll move on to district council report. Scott. Good morning, trustees, members of the public. I have three items I wanted to share with you this morning. One is, is the majority of our work over the last month has been in supporting the board and preparing for the executive director evaluation, which will occur in closed session today. Uh, that work has included gathering some information on comparable salaries, as well as cajoling board members to submit reviews and then collating those into a unified and uniform review. Second item, uh, for those who haven't heard, is that Rebecca Smith had her baby on March 21st. This is her third child, a lovely little girl named Arabelle Catherine Smith. And she was born, as I indicated, on March 21st. Uh, she and her child are doing well, and she is doing everything she can not to be on the network, not to be replying to emails. Uh, but as we've all gotten used to being at home and being on email, I think she's struggling with that a bit. And then third, I was going to also share a little bit on the prevailing wage case, which you heard about from the CSDA representative. Uh, we are working at Downey on a briefing that explains the details on that case, and we hope to have that out in the next week or two, and we'll send that to Kevin. He can share it with the board if you're interested. Uh, essentially, for years, the Department of Industrial Relations has had a, a category position that prevailing wage applies to. And what the court said was is that the, the industrial relations list was wrong, that it was an overly narrow list of positions for which prevailing wage must be paid. And the court basically opened up the floodgates. So we're gonna work a little bit on defining what those floodgates are. Uh, I, I really can't tell you how it affects an entity like District 1000, which already pays prevailing wage for a lot of its work and has a really good in-house workforce, which reduces the need to contract for a lot of out-of-house work. Uh, but I'm sure that once we have a chance to provide that briefing to Kevin, he'll be able to have a better sense of the extent to which that might financially affect the district. So those are the three items I wanted to report on this morning. Hey, Scott, this is Nick. I, I'd like to see if, if you guys are doing some kind of memo on that prevailing wage case. I certainly would be interested in, in, in getting that. Yeah, absolutely. We can distribute that to the legal committee, uh, which I believe you chair. Actually, yeah. I'm not opposed to anyone getting it, but we'll definitely make sure it at least goes to legal. Thanks. Yeah. All right, thank you, Scott. Any other questions for Scott? <laughs> Okay, um, hearing none, we're on to the consent calendar. Um, I would entertain a motion for items 5.1 through 5.4 uh, to approve, unless there's an item that needs to be pulled for further discussion. I'll move consent. Motion by Apis, is there a second? There. Gilbert, second. Second by Gilbert. Jolene, will you take the roll? Yes, Trustee Apis. Aye. Abbas I. Baines. Aye. Baines I. Barandis. 
Brandis, aye. Brandis, aye. Gilbert, aye. Gilbert, aye. Jones, aye. Jones, aye. Lee Reader, aye. Lee Reader, aye. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, motion's approved. And so now on to item 6.1, um, our first action item of the day. Um, this is to appoint uh, a trustee for the vacancy. <laughs> it was uh, a of... Hey, can somebody mute out? I don't know what's going on. I'm getting, I can't hear anything you're saying, Kevin. There we Everybody go. Everybody, please mute unless you're speaking. Thank you. All right. So, um, item six one is appointment of trustee. Uh, vacancy occurred on the board after Jeff Smith um, vacated his position on the board um, back in after the February board meeting. So um, we talked at that time, and then again in March about a path forward. Um, we met all of the California government code sections as far as posting and notifying uh, the county elections office that we had the intent to fill the vacancy. Um, they are in receipt of that notification. Uh, we then posted in our three places um, within the, the district boundaries. Uh, we also posted on our website and social media accounts and then did some print media as well in N Magazine and, and the Sacramento Bee. Um, after uh, posting the, the the notice period and the accepting of uh, letters of interest and resumes by March 19th. We had two uh, interested uh, parties submit, uh, Mr. Chris Burns and Mr. Thomas Smith, both whom are on the call today. Um, I've included in the board packet uh, their, their letter of interest and their uh, attached resumes respectively. And so that's provided to the board to have reviewed um at this time so we review that um the the board i'll open it up to board discussion about you know those items if there's questions for staff or anything about you know the process or what the next step is um, once the board's finished with discussion i'll open it up for public comment and anyone from the public is welcome to to speak on uh, this item i do think that uh, mr burns and mr smith are prepared to you know speak as well on on their own behalf and so we'll, they'll have their opportunity at that time to um, introduce themselves and anything else that the board may be interested to hear um, regarding uh, their their interest and then we'll turn it back over the board um, for an action uh, a motion to appoint one of the two and the the selected uh, appointee then um, once the motions you know, made, seconded, approved. Um, we'll take a couple minutes and they'll take the oath of office and then they'll be seated as a trustee uh, for the remainder of this meeting. And then, um, then that's it. And then we'll notify the county afterwards of the appointment um, and, and get that done. So I'll turn it over to uh, the board for any questions on the process. Um, and then we'll open it up for public comment. If, uh, if if one of the candidates doesn't get a majority of the votes because we only have six people, what what happens then? Who's ever in their car? Can you mute out, please? I just muted uh, that individual. So um, yeah, so if there's if there's not a majority vote on one motion, then we go back to deliberating. Um, if the board doesn't come to consensus today um we we may have to schedule a another special board meeting to fall within our 60 days for the appointment process um otherwise it, the process could revert to the county uh for appointment um and the county would make the decision to appoint thanks for that clarification kevin whoever again is in your car please mute out or leave the meeting. Okay, so um, any any questions or comments from trustees at this time? Otherwise, I'll open it up for public comment. 
Okay, hearing none, um, is there a public comment on this item? Kevin, I think you muted the um, the public comment individual because that doesn't look like a uh, trustee. Right. So that so um, yes, there's uh, a member of the public there that I did mute for the car noise. Uh, but Chris or Tom, did you want to make comments first? Go ahead, Tom Smith. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hopefully everybody can hear me distinctly. I learned a long time ago, it's not what I say, it's what you're able to hear. Uh, yes, I have, uh, just gonna quickly go over my resume and what I bring to the RD board would be 50 plus years of engineering experience in water resources and flood control. I'm a uh, 1966, I know that's a long time ago, 1966 graduate of UC Berkeley in civil engineering and part of my other background i was drafted shortly after that wasn't too worried about it because what's the chances of the army sending a graduate engineer to the infantry in vietnam well statistics was not my strong point so it was 100 percent and i spent a little over a year in in vietnam uh, after coming home, got my job back at USDA Soil Conservation Service, learned to work with rural landowners, installing and constructing conservation practices, also worked in their small watershed and, and flood control program. In 1989, I retired out of that, out of that career with 25 years of service and uh, the next 18 years with, with was with two different private engineering firms here in the Sacramento area, specializing in hydrology, river hydraulics, erosion sedimentation processes, and the designing of environmentally compatible river repairs. In 2009, I retired, and that's in quotes, I retired again and formed Riversmith Engineering. Uh, and I am a small one person firm dealing mostly with, with reviews. Uh, needless to say, I do, I don't say the work is fun, but I certainly enjoy what I get to do. And I find myself now as a sub consultant working with some of the finest and brightest engineers in all the engineering firms in the, in the Sacramento area. Um, one of the best things about my employment with Riversmith Engineering is our liberal time off policy. So uh, I do get to travel, I do get to do other activities uh, aside from just work. As far as uh, knowing what's going on in the area, I became keenly aware of the flood problems in Sacramento after the Valentine's Day storms of 1986 and uh, learned that the, in general, the flood protection for Sacramento area was about one in 70 years, nowhere near the 100 year level of protection and have followed all the different things trying to get Sacramento up to 200, 250 level of protection. Um, knowing all of the, uh, oh, no, I wanted to mention that uh, the Thomas Basin has stayed flood free in modern times, but we have had some close calls. And being aware of all that, I still moved into the basin in 2016 and uh, live in a 55 plus community just south of del paso and next to fisherman's lake we have our own little lake within the community i'm on the advisory board there and as far as other advisory things uh sutter buttes flood control agency i've been on their panel of experts throughout that whole process of improving the levees on the uh, on the feather river that one's about ready to wrap up I'm also on SAFCA's technical advisory committee as they try and upgrade protection on the American and Sacramento rivers. And finally, I just want to add that in addition to my experience, I believe I'm a good listener and would be a positive addition to the board. Thank you for considering.
All right, Tom, thank you so much. Uh, Chris, would you like to make public comment at this time? Yes, please. Um, good morning, trustees. Uh, I appreciate the time to talk to you about my interest in serving again on the board. I know most all of you, I'm getting to know the, the newer board members uh, throughout this process. I've heard many positive comments about how the board operates under Tom's leadership, and I'm ready to become an active board member if, if chosen. I realize my style of representation and uh, on the board may have ruffled some feathers in the past, but if selected, I will commit to building stronger relationships with other board members and staff to ensure the safety of the Natomas community. I look forward to bringing additional diversity to this board as a LGBTQ community member and once again represent the landowners of the Natoman Basin. My priorities today are the same as they were when I ran for this board four years ago, and that's to use my 28 years of government and political experience to help the district fulfill its flood control mission in the most efficient way possible. And I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, any other members from the public wish to speak? Um, I know that there's um, Jay Siddiqui is on the line. Um, I will unmute you in case. So unmuted on my end, but if you'd like to make public comment, you need to unmute yourself. Um, okay. Um, any other public comment on this item? Okay, hearing none, we will go back to um, the agenda item here and we would uh, if there's no other further discussion by board uh, members of staff, um, we would entertain a motion um, for appointment of one of the two applicants. I, I have, Kevin, can I ask Mr. Smith a question? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Mr. Smith, um, do you have any experience um, um, in governance with a public agency? You did mention that you advise SAFCA, but do you, do you have any other experience you'd like to tell us about? I guess I'm wrestling with uh, the specifics of that. Uh, I have not been on a public board before uh, been on uh, when the kids were in elementary school i was on a site council board for uh, north davis elementary school uh, i've worked with governments i've done multiple presentations before boards and uh, trust me i know how difficult those positions are uh, and i think uh, patients and listening skills are probably the, the strongest, the strongest qualities that I that I bring. But uh, almost all of my experience is in the technical rain realm rather than uh, advisory. And, and hopefully that answers your question. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Hi, Mr. Smith. I have a question as well. Um, you know, the main responsibility of this job is oversight and transparency. And a huge part of that is holding staff accountable and addressing, you know, injustices. And, um, you know, it's not an interview for a new general manager. Uh, you know, can you share a little bit more about when you were on that board when your kids were young? On that particular board, uh, there was a, a certain slug of money that was given to the school and we were kind of responsible for allocating that money to, uh, to different programs. And um, probably one of the things that, that bothered me a little bit at that time was too much of the money was going to specialty programs. And, uh, and I felt I was the board member that I wanna look out for everybody 
you know, and, and it would be the same thing for Natomas Basin. You know, the primary goal is flood control. We're still in a precarious state, although we've made really great progress in getting the levees reinforced. But that is our primary goal. And then the other thing I really want to pay attention to is the internal drainage study that somebody already made reference to. So that's all I have to say. Hopefully that answers your question. And what was the outcome of your investigation? Say again. And what was the um, outcome of your inquiry? The outcome of my, I missed the last word, I'm sorry. The outcome of your inquiry, you said there was um, money going to specialty programs. And so what was the outcome oh. of that investigation? I, I think mainly all I did was make an awareness. I don't know that uh, anything really changed, but uh, I felt that, uh, it, anyway, yes. There, there was no, it's not like I changed the world on that as much as I would have liked to. And one, one more question, Kevin, Mr. Burns. Um, since I was not um, on the board when you served, could, could you um, state which committees you served on during your tenure? Yes, thank you. Um, I was uh, urbanization chair, uh, personnel. Um, I also was a representative, an alternate and a representative uh, to SAFCA uh, in the uh, late 2019 to 2020. Okay, thank you, Mr. Burns. Okay, so um, if there's no further questions, um, we'll turn it over, Tom, to you. Okay, we'll open up for um, a motion to appoint one of the two uh, applicants. Um, Based on expertise, I suggest that Tom Smith be appointed. And I make that motion. Is there a second? Second by Brandis. We have a motion and second. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, Jolene, will you take roll? Yes, Trustee Abdus. Aye. Abdus, aye. Baines? No. Baines, no. Verandas? Aye. Verandas, aye. Gilbert? Aye. Gilbert, aye. Jones? No. Jones, no. Lee Reader? No. Lee Reader, no. Congratulations, Tom Smith. No. Uh, it's actually not a majority of the board, right? So it was 3-3. Three, three. Three. Motion fails. You're right. Sorry, I still had Jeff on my list. So as counsel to the board, having seen this dynamic before, maybe I can just walk you through the, the, the likely and appropriate next step would be for someone who voted no to make an alternate motion. That motion would be seconded. We could take another roll call and we can see if the board can take an action at that point. And if not, then we can have further discussion. I motion to appoint Chris Burns. I'll second. A motion and a second by Lee Reader and second by Baines. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Jolene, will you take roll on that motion? Yes. Trustee Abdus? No. Abdus, no. Baines? Aye. Baines, aye. Verandas? Verandas, no. Verandas, no. Gilbert? Tom Gilbert? No. Gilbert, no. Jones? Um, aye. Jones, aye. 
Lee Reader? Aye. Lee Reader, aye. Uh, it's motion. another tie. Yeah, right. Okay, um, <laughs> Scott, um, any any suggestions here? Um, you know, I'll, you know, we're at a, kind of a deadlock here. Um, well, I'll, I'll lay out a few paths for the board to consider. Thank um, you. And I, I don't advise. I don't choose any one of them. That's your choice. One is, is you can just move on, uh, and uh, not taking an action will ultimately uh, defer it to the county to make a decision. Uh, and that county decision will be really for any candidate. It's not limited to just the two that have applied to RD1000. Uh, a second option would be to call it a day today, but to schedule a special meeting where the conversation could con continue. Uh, I would advise you to remember that the Brown Act precludes serial meetings, meaning you shouldn't be having discussions with a majority of board members between meetings. And if you talk with two board members, for example, and one of those talks to another board member, that would be a serial meeting and would violate the Brown Act. So deferring to another day doesn't mean you can have necessarily offline conversations. Uh, a third option would be to defer this to later in this meeting uh, for the item to get pushed to the end of the agenda to create some time and space for board members to think. A fourth would be to open it back up for some discussion. Uh, where we might, uh, board members might ask more questions of the, of the applicants um, or have a discussion amongst yourselves in public. As awkward as that is, especially for the two applicants who are sitting here, the reality is, is you're, you may only uh, get someone to change their vote by actually talking about the pros and cons of the candidates. Uh, so those are the different uh, paths that are out there and you can, as a board, choose any of them that you would like uh, and and play to your comfort level. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. You know, I think some further discussion is appropriate. I mean, I'm, uh, if, if that's okay with everyone, I, you know, I certainly want to shed some light on my votes. Um, certainly, I struggled with this. I know Chris and know the value he brings to the board. Um, you know, I'm concerned about the loss of Jeff and sort of that technical engineering, um, you know, background and and position on the board. I always view these boards as a as a collection of superheroes, each with their own unique uh, powers to make the world a better place. Uh, and certainly. Um, you know, having somebody with uh, Mr. Smith's background, I don't, I don't know you, Mr. Smith, and uh, certainly you have a long and um, certainly um, decorated career and certainly appreciate uh, your military service. Um, you know, you certainly come highly recommended um, from the recommendations that, you know, I see that you have listed, obviously very respected, some very respected folks out in the flood control community. And certainly from my perspective, that's, that's where I struggle with. Um, and it's nothing against Chris and certainly nothing against um, Mr. Smith. Um, but at this point, I'm, I am leaning towards having uh, the superhero with uh, technical, um, uh, the technical component to, to add to um, the dynamics of, of this board. But I just wanted to share my perspective on my votes. This is Tom Gilbert and uh, you know, I share that. Um, you know, it's not just Jeff Smith, but it's also David that uh, Crystal that uh, stepped back or you know moved out of the district. So that's a level of expertise that I don't see a lot of depth in any of the other board members. And uh, to have a member of the public that has that kind of background to kind of oversee what is really a significant part of our operations is, in my mind, critical or key, important. So that was driving my my vote. Um, I'd like to share my thoughts um, as well. Um, certainly, Mr. Smith has a lot of uh, technical expertise, but I feel as though the district is at a critical juncture right now. We have technical expertise in-house. Um, we also still have 
gratefully the services of Paul Devereaux in an advisory capacity. So for me, what's critical at this point is someone who could step in and fit in immediately. And um, Mr. Burns, like myself, uh, is a former trustee that knows the district, knows the board. Um, I did not serve with him um, during uh, his tenure. Um, uh, obviously, um, he replaced me, and now I've replaced him. But I know that he brings background from his professional career in governance that quite frankly, I, I think we could use that expertise on the board as well. Um, we have some of that in Elena, but um, at this point in our district's development, I, I would advocate that um, Mr. Burns could fit in immediately and um, work with us to strengthen our governance. Those are my thoughts. So we are um, also we're very fortunate to have two very good candidates who both bring um, a different set of um, qualities and qualifications uh, from different backgrounds. Personally, I have always viewed at the board its main function governance and not technical expertise. I think that's where we hire the staff, the GM, and uh, bring in consultants as we need um help suggestions from on the technical side of things um having been elected by the members to the board once um right uh, part of elections twice and serving on this board and different committees i, I think uh, chris is more ready to hit the ground running uh, with the covid uh for a new trustee to come on uh, not having the ability to go around the district as uh, in a non-COVID environment, you would be able to and learn our functions and operations would be uh, uh, a little more challenging, especially because there's only a, probably a year and a half term and not a full four year term. Uh, and that's why I would support uh, Mr. Burns to be reappointed for this term. Any other board member comments? Right. Was that leave us with uh, Scott? Well, if there's no more discussion, uh, traditionally there would be a motion and we would uh, take another attempt at seeing if we can have a candidate who receives a majority vote. So can I be clear on the process here? So if this gets split again, um, at some point we are in essence abdicating uh, the decision to the Board of Supervisors. Is that what we're saying? If if the board cannot appoint someone within the 60 day period, and I need to defer to Kevin as to the absolute date on that because I don't recall, then we uh, punt it to the county and the County Board of Supervisors will make a decision. As I indicated before, the County Board of Supervisors does not need to choose as just between Tom and Chris, although as a practical matter, I suspect they will. They will be aware of the fact that there were two very qualified candidates who were available. And I, if I had to guess, the County Board of Supervisors will take a vote just like this. And the advantage they have, of course, is they have an odd number of members. And so it should not be deadlocked. Uh, Kevin, what is that? The end of the 60-day period? Yeah. So the end of the 60-day. Um, so February 12th, um, you're looking was the the date of the vacancy. We provided notice that following Monday, I believe, was the 15th. So I, I believe it starts on the 12th. Um, the 60-day calendar is it calendar days or business days? If so, I believe it's then going to be April 11th or 12th. Um, uh, it, well, it's 60 calendar days. So you said 
February 12th was the date. So uh, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So to so um, we're pretty close. <laughs> so today is eight weeks, right? Uh, and so that's fifty six days. Seven times eight is fifty six. So uh, set fifty seven, fifty eight, fifty nine, sixty. So Tuesday the thirteenth uh, right. would be the sixty day run. So if no decision is made today, the board could elect to request that Kevin schedule a special meeting on the 13th. Under the Brown Act, special meetings only require 24 hours notice. So that notice could go out today or Monday and would still cover a meeting on the 13th. Uh, personally, I would definitely like to have that uh, meeting set up for 12th or 13th if possible, if there's enough interest on the board. Kevin or, or Scott, I, I guess I'd have a question about the Board of Supervisors. Um, you mentioned that they could choose from these two candidates or appoint someone else. Where where would that applicant come from? Would the board have its own process opening it up for applicants or, I mean, how, how would someone bubble up as, yeah. as a potential appointee? <laughs> There is no uh, appointment process for a county where the decision comes up to them. Uh, the county may have its own internal guidelines on how it processes this. My guess is that the Board of Supervisors would look to the Board of Supervisor who represents Natomas. And that supervisor probably has a list of people that have expressed interest in public service. Think about all the planning commission, all the advisory commissions, and members of the board of supervisors are regularly asked to put forward names for those. Frankly, I don't know who the supervisor is who represents Natomas, if it's just one or if it's two. I suspect one or two, a few of you know the answer to that. Who, who is that person? Phil Cerna. Okay. So my guess is, is that Phil would um, be looked to by the board of supervisors generally. Obviously, if there's uh, internal strife within the supervisors at, at that moment, if there's a tradition of three, two votes or two, three votes and Phil is on one side or the other, he may or may not be looked at that way. Frankly, I track a lot of boards of supervisors, but Sacramento County isn't one of them. Uh, but hopefully that provides some insight into what likely would happen. Okay, so uh, basically we could end up with what would essentially be a political appointee who may or may not have either of these two gentlemen's expertise. That's correct. The only requirement would be that the person be a property owner in Natomas or uh, a representative of a property owner in Natomas. And I would say um, that while the code doesn't require it, my recommendation would be that if at the end of the day, the board is deadlocked at the end of the 60 day period, that the board instruct Kevin to write a letter to the county informing the board on the deadlock and also asking the county to consider the two candidates who applied through the process who both appear very qualified. I think that makes it more likely that the county board of supervisors would choose between the two candidates, but there's no guarantee that it would. Okay, thank you, Scott. Kevin. Is there is there value in a, another motion just to see if anyone's uh, constitution has changed a little bit? Or is as you look around the screens, have you determined that that would be a futile effort? Kevin? Yes, Tom. Um, I, uh, I'm, I appreciate what uh, everyone has said and I'm, I, I follow what Nick and and Tom their their arguments those are basically my arguments in favor of Mr. Smith um, that and that he's an elder gentleman like myself um, uh, that that carries a lot of weight weight for me um, I 
um, unlike Deborah, I had an opportunity to spend time on the board with Chris. Um, and as he's acknowledged, um, there, there were times where, um, I'm not sure why, uh, but it did seem that uh, the board uh, was fractured. Um, there were disagreements, maybe necessary, maybe unnecessary, but there, there were more disagreements. Um, and Chris had um, oftentimes was the, in the center of that. Um, he's, he said that he's, he acknowledges that he, he is looking to work more closely with everyone. Um, and I personally don't want to send this to the Board of Supervisors that makes no sense to me. Um, so I would prefer to make a motion to um, have Chris fill the vacancy. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? <clears throat> okay, hearing none, um, Jolene, will you take uh, roll call? Yes, Trustee Aptis? Aye. Aptis, aye. Baines? Aye. Baines, aye. Barandis? Barandis, aye. Barandis, aye. Gilbert? Gilbert, aye. Gilbert, aye. Jones? Aye. Jones, aye. Lee Reader? Aye. Fantastic. Congratulations, Chris. All right, uh, Chris and Tom, thank you so much for your time this morning. Um, Chris, uh, would you hang on the line here? Um, Tom, thank you so much for joining us and, and getting to, to know you a little bit better this morning. Um, still look forward to working with you on your projects along the river system and uh, continuing a good relationship that we have uh, between the district and, and your firm. And, um, you know, any questions after this, uh, please, you know, feel free to follow up with me or uh, any one of the staff members and, and we'd be happy to discuss further. So thank you so much for your time. Could I just say congratulations to Chris and also congratulations to the board. I appreciated listening to the process and I also appreciated the fact that you didn't want to waste more time by going to the Board of Supervisors and taking a chance on, on new candidates. So uh, congratulations to the board. I think you've done a great job. And uh, also congratulations to Chris. Okay, thank you. Thanks so, thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Smith, before you go, I, I just like to say, I, I urge you to continue to remain involved, um, certainly in district matters. We need more uh, folks like you paying attention uh, out there and uh, given your expertise on, on the ground issues as you know, when it relates to implementation matters, like where the rubber meets the road as a lawyer, you know, I, my world's in black and white. I, I look at, um, documents all the time in that sense i shouldn't say black and white in the literal sense or the the figurative sense um it, it's not always black and white obviously but it, having the perspective of somebody practicing on the ground um certainly i find a value and i um again urge you to continue to remain engaged and certainly um uh would love to um to hear from you personally on issues that uh, you're seeing on the ground so thank you thank you Smith, um, Nick took the words right out of my mouth. Please continue to engage with us. Um, and as a fellow alumni of the College of Engineering at UC Berkeley, go Bears. Thank you. And Mr. Smith, I also want to thank you for, you know, applying and being engaged in our district. You know, it's actually very hard, harder than you think to find people who would actually spend time you know, free time to help and look out for our community. So um, hopefully we could see you in our public events and get to know you a little bit more. I am one of your neighbors. Thank you. And Tom, this is Tom Gilbert. I'm 
uh, I'm a fellow vet, so I want to thank you for your service and thank you for showing up today. This was great. It was a great exercise for the board, and uh, I'm sure we'll be seeing you again. Thank you. Okay, um, Chris Burns, Mr. Burns, um, I have it on the screen here. It makes it a little awkward with the video stuff, but I will have you read the oath, um, and then we will uh, seat you as a trustee and then um, continue with the meeting. So if you wouldn't mind, can you see it, Chris? Yes, I can. Do I need to zoom in further at all? No, that, that, I got my glasses. I'm good. Okay. All right. I, Chris Burns, do solemnly swear to that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Scott, any other formalities here? I think. Yeah, the only other formality is Chris needs to stand up, turn in a circle three times, wave his arms wildly. <laughs> no, Congratulations, Chris. You are seated and uh, return as a member of the RD1000 board. Thank you. Thank you. At some, Thank point, you at some point, obviously, uh, you, you and uh, Kevin and uh, and Tom will need to sit down and figure out committee assignments, but I don't think we need that right now unless uh, someone is eager to handle that during this meeting. Uh, well, Congratulations. We have vacancies on the operations committee uh, for one, uh, but I think that that can just be the board president appointment um, to those committees. So Chris, we can, we can work that out um, after the meeting if you'd like. I'm, I'm willing to serve wherever this needed. Okay, so we'll update. I'll work with uh, President Gilbert to, you know, go over those assignments on Monday or so to look where the vacancies where Jeff wasn't on a committee or not, and then um, probably just put back into those rules. But um, if you're willing to serve on any of those committees, that'd be great. I think there, I know there's a vacancy on operations, um, but I'll talk with Mr. Gilbert if he wants to make any other uh, committee adjustments. I just want to say congratulations, Mr. Burns. Welcome back, Kevin. Is is this a case where two cannot exist in the same space time continuum, or are we good? Because I re he replaced me and I replaced him. Are we good? <laughs> I, I think I think we're good. We're we're back to the future or whatever. Yeah. So no, we're good to go. Um, and looking forward to to Chris being back on the team. And uh, we got a lot of stuff to to get going on. Welcome to budget process, Chris. <laughs> So um, we'll move on to item 6.2, which is uh, review and consider uh, support for AB 361. Uh, Dane spoke about this this morning. If there's no objection to you know, the district submitting a support letter, I've attached a draft of that that I'll, I'll ship off. Um, so I'd look for a motion uh, from the board to authorize me to submit on su support of 361 on behalf of the district. Is there a motion to approve? I'll move approval. Motion by Abdus, a second? I second. Second by Lee Reader. Jolene, please take roll. Jolene, you're muted. One more click. Trustee Abdus. Aye. Abdus, aye, Beans. Aye. Beans, aye, Barandis. Verandis, aye. Verandis, aye. Gilbert? Aye. Gilbert, aye. Jones? Aye. Jones, aye. Lee Reader? Aye. Lee Reader, aye. Does Chris vote? Yes, Chris votes. Okay. Trustee Burns? Aye. Burns, aye. Just to clarify, you know, uh, Chris, if you're comfortable voting, I think you had the board packet to review materials or not. I mean, you can, you know, abstain from the vote if you wish, if you don't feel you're informed enough and to make a vote at this moment, but you feel free to vote if you want to. Thank you. No, I got the packet you sent me last week, so. 
Thank you. Um, moving on to item 711, uh, any questions on the committee meeting minutes? Okay, hearing none, um, Chris, I will send you, uh, we're gonna go into closed session now. I'll send you a, a link for that closed session. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to leave um, this meeting open. And so trustees, if you could, um, you know, disconnect from this and you'll have to re-log in. It's just this pain kind of process between this and Zoom, but go ahead and feel free to exit this meeting. Um, completely for yourself and then jump on the Zoom call. Hey, Scott. Scott? Scott sure looks like you've left. Did you? So I want to tell him I need to take a mommy break. Okay, yeah, I'll let him know. I'll text him right now. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. How do I get out? Tom, Scott sent an email a couple of days ago with a link in it. Okay, Tom uh, Brandis and Tom Gilbert, you can leave the go to meeting and, and uh, Trustee Jones as well, because this will stay open for recording purposes. Jump on the link in Zoom so we don't have cross. Um, information. It looks like, and then Chris, I'm going to send that to you right now. Give me one second here. Okay, Chris, you should have
I'm in here too. Sorry, Tom. I had to mute you. <laughs> I liked your little uh, motion there, Ella. <laughs> it's like the Twilight Zone. <laughs> We'll give a couple minutes here for the rest of the trustees to join us. I had stayed logged into the other, so I logged in twice. That's why you were getting that sound back. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. You don't have Nick yet, probably. Then Jag. Then Jag. We have a quorum, and I'm not sure if we're getting Nick back, but hopefully Jag will join us in a minute. <clears throat> I hope Nick's okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, Kevin, it uh, looks like we have all of the board members back who are in the closed session. Uh, if it's okay with you and the president, I will report out and then the board can take uh, a motion on my report. Scott, go ahead. Thank you, Tom. Uh, the board spent uh, about uh, 40 minutes providing an evaluation for Kevin on his performance, which was very positive during this last year. Uh, the board then spent a significant amount of time talking about uh, how to provide appropriate compensation for the general manager in light of that performance. Uh, the board's desire would be to uh, provide a COLA for the general manager, which would be the same percentage used for staff, which will be determined uh, for March of 2021, but it will be applied retroactively back to Kevin's uh, employment contract date, which is February. In addition to using the same COLA that's being used for staff, uh, the board wanted to provide a one-time compensation adjustment of $2,500 to Kevin in light of his performance during a particularly difficult year. Uh, so that was uh, the, where the board kind of came to, and we would look for a, a motion and a second and approval by the board in this open session. Uh, Tom, you'll want to also take any public comment after the motion in a second, please. Okay, so you want to make the motion? I'll second it. Okay. I move, Jag seconded. Jillian, can you take roll, please? Uh, let's just uh, see if there's any public comment. Sorry. Oh, All right. Okay, Okay, trustee Aptis did not return. Trustee Baines. Aye. Baines, aye. Ferrandis? Ferrandis, aye. Ferrandis, aye. Gilbert? Aye. Gilbert, aye. Jones? Aye. Jones, aye. Lee Reader? Aye. Lee Reader, aye. Ferns? Aye. Ferns, aye. Okay, it's approved. Okay. Yeah, motion is approved. Thank you. Um, board um, and I think that's all we have on the agenda today and then I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Jones, second? Second. Second by the reader. Jolene, please take the roll one last time. Okay, Abdus is absent. Trustee Baines? Aye. Baines, aye. Brandis? Brandis, aye. Brandis, aye. Gilbert? Aye. Gilbert I. Jones. Aye. Jones I. Lee Reader. Aye. Lee Reader I. Burns. Aye. Burns I. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Um, we'll talk. We do have an operations committee meeting uh, next Wednesday. Um, Chris, if Tom and I work that out and you're assigned to that committee, which you have a vacancy, I will send you um, all that information, background information on Monday. Thank you.
All right, have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you so much. And that was the longest meeting we've had since I've been here. So we'll do better next time. <laughs> Bye. 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 Meetings adjourned.